Imagine trying to open a massive video file on your computer, but your system only has a few gigabytes of memory left. What does it do? It compresses, it optimizes, it clusters similar bits of data and removes everything non-essential just to make it fit. Now take that idea and scale it up to the size of the universe. What if everything we see, every galaxy, every star isn't truly real, but just a compressed copy of something far more vast, something running inside the memory of a higher intelligence and gravity? What if gravity isn't a fundamental force at all, but simply a byproduct of a cosmic compression algorithm, a way to draw matter closer to reduce separation, to save on processing power? Sounds like science fiction, maybe. But when the laws of physics feel a little too perfect, a little too finely tuned, it stirs something deeper. And we begin to ask, are we living in the universe or are we just running inside it? Welcome to Astro where we don't just look up at the stars, we look inward into the architecture of reality itself, guided by reason, by wonder, and the quiet possibility that maybe we were meant to. Today, we're exploring a radical idea, one that might just change the way you see everything. Let's set the stars aside just for a moment and imagine a computer, not the one you're using now, but a machine far beyond anything we've ever built, a system with no memory limits, processing power on the scale of entire planets, a kind of mind that doesn't just store information, it creates it. Now imagine that mind running a simulation, not of a city, not even a planet, but an entire universe, from the Big Bang to right now. Including you, watching this video, sounds far-fetched? Maybe, but in 2003, philosopher Nick Bostrom proposed something bold. He said one of the following must be true. One, no civilization ever reaches the point where they can simulate a universe. Two, some do, but they choose not to. Or three, they do it, and if they do, then odds are we're living inside one of those simulations. And here's where it gets strange. The laws of physics feel a little too perfect. The constants of nature tuned with unsettling precision, almost as if someone or something set the dials. Are we really living in a natural cosmos? Or are we part of a cosmic engine, rendered like unity or unreal, but at the quantum level, where particles behave less like matter and more like lines of code? Brian Greene calls this a mathematical reality. Elon Musk? He once said the odds we're not in a simulation are one in billions. But if we are inside something, who built it? And is it flawless? Or are there glitches, bugs in the system that we mistake for randomness? We may never know. But if the universe is a simulation, then everything in it, including you, is data. And data by design can always be compressed. Try this. Pick up a pencil. Now, let it go. You just resisted the full pull of Earth a planet weighing more than six sextillion tons using only your fingers. That is the paradox of gravity. Among the four fundamental forces of nature, gravity is the weakest by far. Weaker than electromagnetism. Weaker than the strong force. Weaker even than the weak force. And yet it's the one that shapes the entire cosmos. The silent architect holding planets in orbit binding stars into galaxies, bending the fabric of time itself. But here's the question. 
Why would the weakest force rule the largest scale? Physics still doesn't have a full answer, but maybe... We've been asking the wrong kind of question. What if gravity isn't really a force? What if it's a function? Think back to a compressed file, a rare archive. When a system is running low on space, it reorganizes. It groups similar data, eliminates what's redundant, holds everything closer to fit within the limits. If the universe is a simulation, then maybe gravity is just an algorithm, a method for clustering information, a shortcut to compress reality. Because what we call mass might just be the density of data, and where information gets dense, space bends. The result? Everything falls inward. You see it clearest in black holes, where density reaches extremes. So extreme that space collapses. According to the holographic principle, all the information inside a volume can be encoded on its boundary, like metadata in a compressed file. Enough to rebuild the whole thing from just the surface. Entropy, usually called disorder, can also be seen as something else, the amount of information required to describe a system. And in a compressed universe, entropy becomes a storage limit, a cosmic hard drive. So what if gravity, entropy, even three-dimensional space itself aren't truly natural? What if they're tools, tools of optimization, ways to save on cosmic bandwidth, a kind of data compression on a universal scale. It sounds strange, but the more you think about it, the more it feels eerily plausible. Because if everything is data, then that data must be sorted, compress, encoded. And if we are being compressed, how would we even know? Or worse, what if watching the universe unfold is simply us moving through a sandbox, a simulation so elegant? So complete, we forgot it was never real. You can measure time, track motion, map the stars with breathtaking precision. But have you ever wondered, is what I see really what is? Because if we are inside a simulation, then everything we use to observe the universe, telescopes, colliders, gravitational waves, might not be revealing the universe. They might just be running on it, software, analyzing software. And you can't step outside the box if your own thoughts are built from the box itself. It's like a character in The Sims. No matter how clever they get, they'll never see the screen, never touch the keyboard, and never know the player. And maybe neither do we. When we ask, where does gravity come from? when we measure entropy in black holes, when we estimate how much information space can hold, are we just studying the archive from inside the archive? Can we even know we're compressed if reality is already optimized to hide that fact? What if there's a glitch, a tiny fracture in the code of the cosmos? Would we feel it? Would we know? Or would it just look like another anomaly? In quantum physics, there's something called quantum noise. Particles that appear, vanish, return. No clear reason, no classical cause. Some scientists wonder, is this the end of understanding? Or is it the flicker of something deeper? A hum, a signal, an engine beneath the veil. We may never step beyond the system. Because whatever runs the simulation, if it exists, lies outside the very structure we live in. But the question remains, not just in labs, not just in theories, but within us. What if what we call reality is just a rendered scene, a sandbox so beautifully built that even those inside it forgot what they're inside of? And if that's true, then maybe truth doesn't come from more measurement, but from a better question. Because maybe what's being compressed isn't the data, maybe it's us.
We may never get to unzip the universe. There's no button marked extract here. No progress bar, no final percentage. But each photon, each equation, each signal drifting in from galaxies millions of light years away, it's like a bite. Single fragment, a whisper from the archive. And our job is to piece them together. Because if the cosmos really is a compressed file, then science is the tool we use to read it. Each discovery, a quiet line of code, echoing across the command line of reality. But still, there's a limit. And that limit doesn't live in our telescopes or our quantum processors. It lives in the boundary we can never cross. The system that defines our very sense of what is. And strangely, that may be where hope begins. Because if someone or something once wrote the first line of code, if gravity was tuned just right, not too strong, not too weak, so stars could burn, galaxies could form, and the story could unfold, then maybe this universe wasn't just noise. Maybe entropy isn't chaos. Maybe it's order we haven't learned to read yet. Maybe gravity isn't just a pull. Maybe it's an invitation. A quiet voice drawing everything closer, closer to truth, closer to the source. And maybe you, yes, you watching this aren't just a bystander. Maybe you are part of the design. A conscious packet of data asking the one question that still echoes, what am I inside all this? And if that question still lingers, then the journey isn't over, not yet. Because the real mystery isn't just that we might be inside a rare file. The real mystery is who hit compress.